Well, he tried. He he really tried. Pushed Max Verstappen to the limit, but Lando Norris ultimately came up short. What's the saying? So close yet so far away. That was Lando Norris at the end of this race. Max Verstappen won at Imola, his third win at Imola, third consecutive race. Of course, there was no race here last year due to the flooding that happened in the region. But the first 50 laps or so of this race, it was boring. Just to put it blatantly, just to be blatantly honest, um, yeah, not much happened. Uh, Perez moved up a bit. There was some stuff going on at the tail end of the field, mid-pack. Botas passed Ocon or something, or Ocon passed past Botas. As I said, not a lot of memorable stuff in this race. But then with about 15 laps to go, maybe a little bit less, it started to get pretty interesting. Lando Norris was more than five seconds back off of Max Verstappen for the majority of this race, but then suddenly, out of nowhere, Norris is closing in. And at first, it was like, okay, he's cut it down to five seconds, four and a half seconds. It's like, ah, Max Verstappen's probably conserving. Uh, he only had one track limit violation left before he got a penalty. You know, oh, he's probably just playing it safe. But then the gap kept on getting closer. Four seconds. Three and a half. Three seconds. Two and a half. He was within two seconds. And it's like, okay, this is like, this is actually happening. Like, Lando Norris, who just got his first win a couple of weeks ago, the last time we had a race at Miami, he could win back to back here. He is outrunning Max Verstappen right now. And it was a second and a half. And that that's basically where it, I don't want to say stalled out because Norris did end up finishing seven tenths of a second behind Verstappen. But that's when Norris started to struggle a bit. You could see when they showed his onboard, when they showed him, he would go through the Villeneuve chicane, Tamborello too. And when he would get through the exit of those chicanes, you would see the back end of his car step out. He'd start to slide around, slide the tires. And I think... In my opinion, I just think he hurt the tires a little bit too much there on exit, just trying to push for everything he could. And you can't blame the guy for trying, going after his second ever win. You know, how often in this era of F1 do you get to chase down Max Verstappen and Red Bull for a win in the final lap? So you're going to go after that opportunity. But uh, Norris was pushing as hard as he can, as I said, sliding the car around, um, almost getting in the gravel a couple times. But he, he pushed Max Verstappen as far as he could go. Verstappen, the last few years, he's gotten so many wins, but they've been at ease for the most part, winning 10 seconds ahead of the field, 15, 20, whatever it may be. And he has not been pushed to the line like he has been today. It was a hard-fought victory for Verstappen. He led maybe all but two laps during the pit cycle, but it, as I said, it came down to that last lap. It came down to being pushed to the wire. If Norris could have gotten within DRS in the last three laps or so, maybe he could have had a shot at him heading into turn one, but ultimately never got within that DRS until the last straight. So literally, you know, a tenth of a lap to go. So Lando Norris, as I said, he tried, he pushed, he tried, but ultimately he fell up short. Not a lot of things happened in this race. As I said, that was about it. Nothing else memorable from this race. I could not tell you a single thing. No incidents. Uh, Perez went off once. Albon had a tire, a loose wheel, and he had to limp around. And he finished like two laps, three laps down because they had to do five pit stops on the day. As I said, nothing really significant other than the chase for the win. Well, let's look at the results of this race. Max Verstappen is your winner. That's win number five on the year, maybe four, five, six. You lose track after about three. Uh, but yes, Max Verstappen, it was a record tying weekend for him. He has eight consecutive poles in Formula One, only the second one to do that behind Ayrton Senna. And of course, this year, the 30th anniversary of his and Roland Ratzenberger's death. So a lot of tributes this weekend at Imola, the track that they both died at. Uh, we saw a pre-race tribute earlier in the weekend where everyone wore like a Senna shirt and, you know, they had Ratzenberg, they had the Austrian and Brazilian flags. And we saw Sebastian Vettel uh, drive one of Senna's, his 1993 car, I believe, around the track before the race, hold up a Austrian and a Brazilian flag. Uh, so a lot of tributes at the track that they both lost their lives at 30 years ago. Uh, the 30 year anniversary, a very big deal. Uh, but as I said, Verstappen 
tied that record for most consecutive polls. And as I said earlier, he he this win not as easy as some of his other ones was pushed to the line was he was pushed. So one of his toughest victories, maybe, uh, but ultimately a victory, still a victory. He now holds, once again, a very big lead in that driver's standings, especially with Perez having an off day. Uh, so Verstappen, big lead in the driver's championship. But Lando Norris has become, I don't want to say he's a threat because Verstappen realistically will win the world championship this year, but he's going to be the biggest threat in terms of winning races this year as it's shown as of recently he finished second at china he won at miami and he's finished second here today at imola so mclaren they figured something out they've got speed not just with norris we'll talk about piastri here in a second but the mclarens have shown speed recently it's very promising they may have a shot at second in the constructors right now maybe if perez has another cold streak Dare I say they have a chance of the constructors? I still think that's a long shot. I still think Red Bull sweeps the championships. But McLaren, very strong, great driver pairing. Lando Norris has been on it these last few weeks, as I said, with the win at Miami. And another runner-up here today. He's been killing it. Tried his hardest, but ultimately came up short. Then we have Charles Leclerc on the podium at Ferrari's home race. One of their two home races. I think this one is technically closer to Marinello. Someone correct me if I'm wrong there. But... Uh, obviously to get a podium at home at Imola, uh, very special for Ferrari, the Tifosi, all of them. So good run for him. Uh, Ferrari was just a little bit off McLaren today, obviously uh, off of Verstappen. Everyone was off of Verstappen's pace, but um, yeah, good day for Ferrari, but ultimately just a little bit behind McLaren. So I'm sure they'll want to talk about that. Fourth place, Oscar Piastri, great weekend for him. Qualified second, but had a grid penalty due to impeding someone in qualifying. So that cost him three spots. He was able to move up one place to fourth ahead of Carlos Sainz in fifth. The other Ferrari driver lost that position to Piastri. Piastri was on his tail most of the day, but in the pit cycle, Piastri was able to jump him and run away. Sixth place, Lewis Hamilton, good race for him. Seventh place, George Russell. Eighth place, Sergio Perez, his worst qualifying session of the season, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, qualified 11th, had to run an alternate strategy, ends up finishing eighth. Ninth place, Lance Stroll, good for him to finish second. I can't remember, or finish ninth, get two points. Um, tenth place, Yuki Tsunoda, good day for him. Another point for Alpha Tauri. Um, good result for them once again. Then for your non-points finishers, Hulkenberg, Magnussen, Ricardo, Ocon, Joe Guan Yu, Gasly, Sargent, Botas, Fernando Alonso started in the pit lane. Just bad day for him. Just never had a chance. And then Alex Albon, as I said earlier, on their first pit stop, they had an issue not getting the wheel properly attached. And that ended up costing them. They had to pit a couple more times just to make sure that issue was resolved. So... That is the 2024 Emilia Romagna Grand Prix, Imola, whatever you want to call it. But uh, ultimately, as I said, it was a pretty boring race for the most part. But Lando Norris tried to make it interesting there at the end, was chasing down Max Verstappen, cutting into his lead, made it seven tenths at the end there. Wish there could have been a couple more laps to see if they would have gone side by side. But um, hopefully we get more close battles for the win like that in the year i know the last couple of years for staffing just dominated and people want to see a new winner or new winners a new contender um whether it's norris leclerc signs even a perez like whoever it may be uh close battles for the win are always fun so um laps one through 50 was like a two out of ten laps 50 through 63 like an eight out of ten you know it's fun to watch them close in just to watch that gap close 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 so um not bad. Not, 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 I won't remember most of it. But anyways, thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed. What a busy couple of weeks we have here in the racing world. We've got Indianapolis 500 qualifying later today, or the, the Fast 12 and the Last Chance qualifiers. Kyle Larson has a shot at the pole for all you NASCAR fans. Uh, then we got the NASCAR All-Star race tonight. And then next week, oh boy, what a weekend. The Monaco Grand Prix, the Indianapolis 500, and the Coca-Cola 600 all on the same day. I'm looking forward to that one. Always a great day.